In this lesson, we're going to have a look at the graphical interpretation of the derivative. This means that we are going to have a look at what the value of the derivative tells us about the graph of the function. We know that the derivative determines the gradient of the tangent at any point on the graph. This gradient can now indicate one of three things. Firstly, we can get a positive gradient. And a positive gradient will be an indication that the graph itself is increasing at that point, meaning that the graph is moving up from left to right. Or we can find a negative gradient, and that negative gradient will indicate that the graph is decreasing at that specific point, which means that the graph is moving down from left to right. And lastly, we can get a gradient that is equal to zero, and this we are going to call a stationary point. Example 1. If f is given, determine whether the graph is increasing or decreasing, or has a stationary point at each of the following points, and the first point given is x is equal to minus 2. We already know that increasing, decreasing and stationary points are determined using the derivative, so we are going to start off determining the derivative of this given function. This can be done using our differentiation rules, and then we will have 6x squared minus 6x minus 12. But we want the derivative at the specific point where x is minus 2, so we substitute x with minus 2, and this gives us a value of 24. So now we know that the gradient at x is minus 2 is equal to 24, which is a positive value or bigger than zero. So our conclusion can be that the function is increasing at x is equal to minus 2. In B, we now need to determine whether this graph is increasing, decreasing, or has a stationary point at x is equal to minus 1. And we already know the derivative, so we can substitute minus 1 into this derivative. Here we will get a value of 0. And this means that the gradient at x is equal to minus 1 is exactly 0, which means that this graph has a stationary point at x is equal to minus 1. Example 2. The sketch shows the graph of f. Our first question is to calculate the coordinates of the stationary points of f. So now you need to know that stationary points are indicated by a derivative that is equal to 0, so here we're going to start off determining the derivative of this function. And this will be minus 3x squared plus 12x minus 9. And to determine our stationary points, we're going to put this equal to 0 and solve x. And I'm immediately going to divide this equation by minus 3 to simplify the equation. And this now needs to be factorized. And this gives us two x values where this graph will have stationary points, and that will be at x is 1 and 3. We were asked for the coordinates of these stationary points, so we need to substitute these x values into the original function to calculate the y values. So I'm going to start off substituting 1 into the original function's x values, and that means my first stationary point is at 1 minus 1. And then I will substitute 3 into my original function to find my second stationary point at 3, 3. If we go and have a look at the graph, we will see that these two stationary points are the turning points of the graph. Question B. For which values of x is f increasing? We know that increasing means there's a positive gradient and it is moving up from left to right. So on the graph, that will be in between the two turning points. We need to answer the question in terms of the x values. So our x value at our first stationary point is 1, and the x value at our second stationary point is 3, and these are all the values in between. And to write this down, you now have an option of two different notations. So you can write down that it is x element of 1 and 3, or you can say that x is in between 1 and 3, 
and then you have to mention x elements of real numbers. In question C, we are asked for which values of x is f decreasing? The graph decreases as it moves down from left to right, and that means it has a negative gradient. And this is before our first turning point, and then again after our second turning point. These are two separate parts, so two separate answers. And our first part is the interval where x is to the left of or smaller than 1. Or our second part is where x is to the right or bigger than 3. And again, you need to mention x element of real numbers.